Our boy Peacemaker is going to be in some trouble after that And then What's going on to all my Peacemaker fans out there? And welcome back to my channel, Movie Files. Elliot back again, breaking down the latest episode of HBO Max's Peacemaker Episode 6, which marks the return of James Gunn, who directed this episode. This is his first time directing since Episode 3, and, uh... This might be the best episode he's directed so far. I mean, the direction was great. The jokes were hilarious. The reveals, oh my goodness. We got so much to break down this for the review. But before we do so, make sure you're checking me out on all my other social media accounts. If you're new to the channel, we're on the quest of 20,000 subscribers. So if you want to be a part of this awesome community, make sure you're subscribed and you're hitting that notification bell. And as you can see on the screen now, if you enjoyed this review, well, make sure to give the video a thumbs up and also share the review. But more importantly, we're talking spoilers. So go ahead and let me know your thoughts in the comments its pros, cons, thoughts on the diary, how the hell is Peacemaker going to get out of the situation, how will things shape up in the last two episodes, let's talk about it all in the comments below, so just my initial thoughts before we break this all down. I think this might be James Gunn's best episode that he's directed so far. I mean, it's such great direction. The reveals were played so great. The jokes to me, this to me is the funniest episode of Peacemaker so far. And I'm just excited to see what the hell else is going to happen in the last two episodes. I thought this isn't... I don't know if it's my favorite so far. This might be my second favorite episode. I gotta, I gotta think about it. I'll have a ranking for you all once we wrap up the show. But I thought this was a great episode of Peacemaker. But let me know your thoughts in the comments now. But let's get into what I liked about this episode. Starting off, which I am a, uh, I do not like when shows have like cliffhangers and then they don't address it like right away or they wait to the middle of the episode or wait to the next episode to address it. Not with this show. This is why I love Peacemaker. Right up front, we find out what happened when Mern, you know, pushes out of bio to the floor and we see that he's not there to hurt her. And this is where we get one of many big reveals. Here comes Hardcore and she's like, hey, here's your gun. We got something to talk about. And Hardcore know about Mern being a butterfly, and this is where we get some great explanation. And we get, as an audience, not only does Adebayo find out what's going on, but we learn as well. So here is the deal as we break it all down. Hardcore found out that Mern was a butterfly after episode three explosion because he didn't have any like physical damage. He seemed to be okay. And plus, it seems like he knew way too much information and intel that they didn't know about the butterflies. She confronted him and he told her the truth. And the truth is, well, I don't know how long the butterflies have been on planet Earth, but they're planet was dying so they made their way down to earth and they're just like you know what this is pretty cool we're gonna just go ahead and lay low and just enjoy the rest of our lives either you know even though they have to kill people because you have to kill the host in order to inhabit their body so not all good sunny rainbows so you know there's that aspect but their leader golf or should i say it stop Ick, Ick, I believe is how you pronounce her name. They're like, you know what? Yeah, this is a pretty good life, but let's just go ahead and just take over this whole planet. And that explains why they're taking the hosts or taking the bodies of people of high power. So yeah, we got some good butterflies. We got some bad butterflies. Mern's one of the good ones. And his whole mission is to stop the butterflies from taking over the world. So I love that we get all that information right up top. And we also get a little bit of a quieter, more kind of sad moment because it goes back to them killing the people they have to, you know, embody their, you know, be the host, and he says he has their memories, he sees how terrible Mern was, and he feels bad for taking over her life, so I like that little moment there, again, it explains, like, okay, do they inhabit their memories, how do they know how to communicate and all that stuff, and how do they know how to smile, which we'll talk about later, so I love, again, getting all that information right up top to kind of give the audience a better idea of what's going on, I appreciate that, but also, the big question is, will Adebayo tell her mother about what she learned? We'll talk about Adebayo and maybe trusting her more after this episode, but can't leave out our boy John. He knew about this, so he just decided to close his ears whenever they brought that up, and uh, oh yeah, you know when I mentioned last week, I wonder if the butterflies have inhabited another animal, you know, we got a gorilla. There's a cow. There's a cow in the mix, and I can't wait to see what that cow looks like, but we'll talk about that at the end of the review. But going into the rest of this episode, again, the jokes to me were just fantastic. As Peacemaker goes to this school with these kids, he's talking about how he captured Kite Man. One of the kids is like, wait, none of that stuff made sense how he, the Kite Man wasn't able to fall out of the sky. And that was one of many great questions that the kids have with Superman. You know, the encoding of Superman was a question. Hey, do you know the Flash? And he's like, yeah, I know the, fla the Flash. He's pretty much much a D-bag, as you would expect, which I thought was hilarious, and, um, my favorite Justice League member, you know, Batman's my favorite superhero, but I love me some Wonder Woman, especially in the Justice League, hey, 
Peacemaker. Do you know her? Yeah, I met her at a party one time, and she didn't really say anything to me. She just if me for the whole night. <laughs> just like the jokes about the Justice League. And it makes you wonder if any of those members will make their way into this show. I think there's one member we might be able to see in the finale that maybe fix all this stuff going on. We'll talk about that in the end. But leave it to one of the kids to poke fun of Peacemaker and his whole get up. And then, you know, Jamel's kid acts Peacemaker. Tell us a little bit about your origin story. And this is actually a pretty good scene because this goes back to us wondering as an audience, what exactly happened to Peacemaker's brother? Will we see that they were fist fighting? And apparently, you know, Chris hit him so hard that he ended up killing his brother. I think there's definitely more to that than what we see so far. Like, I believe, you know, their dad probably pitted them against each other and, you know, something more happened than what we saw in that scene. So I th I, at least I hope we get, and I trust James Gunn, we're going to probably get more context of exactly what happened. But Sad moment to see. Again, we're still seeing and peeling the onion and layers behind Chris, who the peacemaker really is. And I still love that we're still getting that uh, that character focus and diving deeper into the character here. But uh, yeah, another big moment. Peacemaker might have a child, and that child is in this classroom. As one of those little girls say, hey, uh, when you met the Flash, you remember this girl? I couldn't remember the character's name at Star Labs. Yeah, that's my mom, and uh, you might be my dad. I, I think it's a joke, but... Is Peacemaker a baby daddy? That's not a good thing, but it, it's very funny if it is just a joke. But I don't know. He might be a dad. Let me know your thought on Peacemaker, the dad. That's season two, right? He's going to be raising his little girl. But either way, speaking of dad, we see that White Dragon has now been officially let out of prison. Obviously, Captain Locke isn't uh, a big fan and happy of what Detective Song did with going behind his back. And now it is time for the police to apprehend Peacemaker and then leave it to Peacemaker's dad. He has to do what he's been wanting to do for a very long time and that's kill his son we'll talk about those two kind of things that detective song want to do and with white dragon want to do and how that ties into the ending once we get to that point but Man, I mentioned how the jokes were so funny in this episode, and this is one of many great jokes. You see that the butterfly, or aka Golf, is trying to communicate with Peacemaker by putting a Peacemaker sign on the glass there, and they're trying to communicate with the butterfly, and it's just two rules, right? Adrian, uh, Vigilante, my favorite character of the show, just two rules. Yes or no? That's all we're doing. Leave it to Adrian to say to the butterfly, first question, what's your favorite color in, in the back and forth between... <laughs> Adrian and Chris, it was just so funny to me as they're talking about the movie references about the alien invasion. They bring up movies like Pitch Black, Alien, E.T., Close Encounters, and him wanting to get impregnated by one of the butterflies so he can be a mother and have motherhood. It's just, again, the jokes were really clicking for me in this episode. And, and whenever Vigilante and Peacemaker are on screen together, it's pure gold in my opinion but the cops are there and they try to escape the house which they ultimately do leave his trailer but in the back of my mind i'm like oh yeah that goddamn diary why in the diary new world order is in there the democrats or should i say like in the diary it says democrats are going to take over the world and it's a bunch of other stuff and it's essentially alluding to peacemaker a uh, conspiracy of killing all these people of power because he believes that their aliens are going to take over the world we'll talk about that a little bit more in context towards the ending but that Waller, oh, can't trust her at all, but leave it to Adrian to un unfortunately fall out of the tree. He has the butterfly attached to him. It breaks and it goes right into Detective Song's mouth, and now it's being taken over by the butterflies. And really cool moment here, the action sequence where we see them escaping, running from the police. Eagly is a badass. We see Eagly in action, taking out the cops, but then we end up seeing that there's still, they get surrounded, and here's Captain Locke. He comes in. He kills the rest of those cops in cold blood, and it's important to remember when Peacemaker and Adrian are running, you see the reaction from Peacemaker. He was very disturbed and bothered by those cops, you know, being killed in cold blood, which goes back to Peacemaker's changing. He is not all about killing men, women, and children to get, you know, peace at all costs. He's now kind of seeing that that's not the best philosophy to live by and that's still and i love that they're giving us the layers and giving us those character moments but car at this point and again the banter the back and forth between the two characters and again having adrian and chris having those kind of heart-to-heart -heart moments as he's 
telling, you know, Adrian is noticing, what's this newfound care of life that you have now? And he don't really, he doesn't really express it to Adrian at this point. But again, I love that they have those quieter moments. But this is where Captain Locke, he takes the diary and decides to put it into his office, which I'm just like, that was a stupid idea. Why wouldn't you just, just like immediately meet with Mern? But he puts it in his office and we'll get to that diary, unfortunately, a little bit later. But now with Detective Song being inhabited by the leader, they she goes to her computer, she enters some technology information to her computer, and then she has her moment with her partner, and he's, she's just like, enjoy the moment. You know, this human actually cared for you, and... and funny moment here the smile the awkward smile that we see here and the awkward smiles we see later was very uh, well placed James Gunn but back to our crew as peacemakers noticing what are, you, what are you guys doing? You're hiding something from me. None of them tell them what's actually going on. And now they're tasked with finding the source and finding this cow is our big goal here. But we see at this point, Detective Song, or I should say Golf, the lead butterfly, has reinforcements come in. And it looks like there's like a thousand of the butterflies. She takes the butterflies, they infiltrate the police station, taking over all the police, taking over all the prisoners, and again, those awkward smiles coming back and making its way. Meanwhile, intercut that with White Dragon and his crew of people. He now has his suit on, and he now has his crew, and that they're looking for a Peacemaker. So not only do you have the aliens looking for Peacemaker and taking over the world, you now have his father. And again, that's what James Gunn does so great in his movies and his, in a show like this. There's the world ending stuff going on, but then there's the personal connection stuff going on. Again, and Guardians of the Galaxy is a great example of that. Uh, and all a lot of his movies, it's just, you know, world ending event going on, but it's still personal to our main character. So again, James Gunn direction and writing was so fantastic. But, you know, no worries for me anymore in regards to, I was always asking in the last few weeks, can we trust Adebayo? Well, I think it's pretty safe that she's a good person. She's talking to her wife and all this stuff has been really weighing on her and she just just doesn't want to lie anymore but I thought it was very funny we end up learning this scene that her and her wife they are from Gotham and they're like all right let's just go back home to Gotham I'm like I would not want to go back to Gotham this would be like a vacation to me right I'm surprised Waller let her daughter live in Gotham as we all know there's crime 24 7 in Gotham so I thought that was a pretty fun like little easter egg but also pretty like you guys live in Gotham? I would want to stay here. Forget the, you know, I'll take alien invasions over getting, you know, harassed or murdered by the Joker, but <laughs> neither here nor there. We go back to another quieter moment with Chris, and this is a great moment here. He confesses to Harcourt that, you know, he doesn't want to kill anymore, right? Yeah, I'll kill some aliens, but I don't want to kill people for just, you know, selfish reasons or, or reasons I think they're right. So again, I love that moment there. And, you know, she calls him Chris. She tells her, you know, tells Chris her real name. And it's just a really good moment between those two characters. And I'm glad that I... I personally don't think it has to be romantic. I think it just needs to be like a level of respect to the two characters, but who knows if they'll have like a romantic thing in the last two episodes. But we in and, and we'll maybe get a season two, because it's the you know most watched show on TV right now, so fingers crossed on that. But as we end, Chris having a quieter moment with himself, playing the piano. Here comes Adrian talking about, dude, I thought you said you didn't have a diary. We see Peacemaker sees the TV, and now the police have blamed everything on Chris. He's killed the golf family, the massacre at the distribution center and all the high-end people that have been dying has been all due to this controversy this conspiracy theory that peacemaker has made up in his head that the world's being taken over by the aliens and we end with captain Locke putting it out there if you see peacemaker stop him by any means necessary aka kill him on sight so not only does he have everyone looking for him same time, can't forget that his dad and the white dragon is looking to kill him at the same time. So what a great way to end this episode. And again, it goes back to Waller. She planned this out the whole time that she was going to blame. Once all the dust settled, the aliens have been taken out. Pin it back on Peacemaker. Waller, whew, she is cold-blooded. But I, and I don't want to leave out. I haven't been mentioning all the post credit scenes. This was a pretty funny one when we saw Captain Locke trying to uh, like pretend that he was sad that the police had died. I thought that was pretty funny. But... What a great episode. Again, the funny stuff is fantastic. The Justice League jokes, which, by the way, you might wonder to yourself, okay, once they figure out the uh, butterfly situation, what is Peacemaker going to do to clear his name? Well, they've established that he knows the Flash in Central City, and uh, we know the Flash can reverse time. So I wonder if that's the big cameo that might be, that's might be been rumored out there that there's going to be a Justice League member making an appearance in the finale or maybe next week. 
that would be pretty cool if the Flash can come and uh, kind of switch this stuff up and help out Peacemaker. But who knows what Justice League member might make an appearance, if one makes one at all. But again, I thought the direction was great. The quieter moments were great. The funny moments really stuck to land. And to me, this was the funniest episode of Peacemaker, but also the reveals were fantastic. And again, this isn't the second to last episode. We got two more episodes left, so I'm really excited to see what James Gunn has up his sleeve. I can't wait to see what this cow looks like. And how long have the butterflies been on earth and how many are good like Mern and how many are bad like Goff and the whole crew of reinforcements I can't wait but I really love this episode let me know your pros and cons and thoughts and theories of what you hope to see in the final two episodes of Peacemaker if you stuck around to this point in the video I appreciate every single one of you all before you all leave make sure if you haven't already to like the video share the video leave your thoughts in the comments and of course subscribe to the channel we're growing this community we're almost to 20,000 subscribers and I appreciate every single one of you all hope you enjoyed this review hope you're staying safe as you can see on the screen now subscribe to my channel check out my other content we'll catch you all on the next video